As I release this video, iOS 26.2 is available to download on compatible iPhones. Now, if you know much about iOS releases, the odd number point releases, so 26.1 for example, are usually just bug fixes. It's the even number point fixes, like this one, that usually contain a bunch of new features. And this release is no different. There are a number of really interesting quality of life improvements across all areas of iOS. And in this short video, I'm going to show you the ones that I think are most interesting. Okay, let's get into it. Apple has added a really good feature to the Reminders app. So now when you create a new reminder, you'll see that there is a new toggle switch that you can switch on in the date and time section called Urgent. When you toggle this on, it will force you to input a date and a time for your reminder. The difference here is that when the time arrives for your reminder to be completed, instead of just flashing up on the screen as a notification, an alarm will go off on your iPhone like the alarm that you set in the morning. You can choose to complete the task directly from the alarm screen or you can press stop if you need a little bit longer. But when you do this, the task will show as a live activity prompting you to complete it. It's clearly not something that you're going to use for every task in your reminders list, but it is a welcome ability to really differentiate between the stuff that you absolutely have to get done by a certain time versus the stuff that you would just like to get done quickly. Oh, very quickly, if you watch videos like this and think, well, that's great, but I'll definitely forget it later, I've made something to fix that. I send one short free iPhone tip every day direct to your inbox. It's called the Daily Swipe. It takes 30 seconds to read and it genuinely helps you remember and actually use tips like the ones in this video. Just scan the QR code on screen or tap the link in the description to join for free. In iOS 26.1, Apple made it so that you could dial back the amount of liquid glass in the operating system in general. And now in iOS 26.2, Apple is letting you decide how much liquid glass you would like in the clock on your lock screen. So to find this setting, you would tap to wake up your iPhone and then long press on the lock screen so that you see the customize button down at the bottom. Tap on this, then tap on the clock. And down at the bottom, you've got the two buttons, one for glass and one for solid. The difference now is that on the glass option, you have a slider. And if you slide that to the left, whilst in glass mode, you can go from a much more transparent glass look over on the left to a much less transparent glass look over on the right. I've not yet had a chance to properly test this one, but I have confirmed that this is a new feature in iOS 26.2, the ability to airdrop to people who are not in your contacts list for up to 30 days. So previously, the only way that you could do this was to airdrop to people who are already in your contacts list or to allow access to everyone for a period of 10 minutes. Moving forward, you'll be able to create a six digit code, which you'll then share with the person that you want to airdrop to. They input the six digit code on their device and you'll be able to airdrop to them for a period of up to 30 days before you have to go through the process again. But importantly, it means that you don't have to add them as a contact in order to airdrop with them. Your iPhone has been able to flash to alert you to an incoming call or notification for a while now, but it's always been limited to the flash on the rear of the device, which is useful if your phone is face down on a table, but not much use if your phone is face up. In iOS 26.2, Apple has thankfully resolved this issue. If you go into settings, then choose accessibility, then head to the hearing section, then tap into audio and visual and scroll all the way down to the bottom of this page, you'll see a flash for alerts option. Tap into this and you can enable flash for alerts in general and then choose between the LED flash, which is the one on the rear of the device or the screen, which is obviously your screen or both. You can also decide if this should happen while the phone is unlocked as well as when the phone is locked and whether or not it should happen in silent mode. If you ever watch videos like this and think there's no way I'm gonna remember all of that, you should have a look at iPhone Essentials Plus. It's my training portal for the iPhone with more than 200 lessons, all broken into clear modules, so you can learn at your own pace. Every lesson includes a short video, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF, so you can follow along in whatever way suits you. You can browse through the modules or just use the search tool to jump straight to what you need. There are no ads, no sponsors, and it's a single one-time purchase that includes all future updates. And if you've got a Mac, there's Mac Essentials Plus as well, which works in exactly the same way. You can buy each course on its own, or bundle them together for the best value. If that sounds good, scan the QR code on screen or check the link in the description or the pinned comment. Apple has been quietly making improvements to the podcast app for a while now, and there's some really significant changes in iOS 26.2. 
First of all, Apple is using artificial intelligence to automatically generate chapters within all podcast episodes, regardless of whether the uploader has added them or not. So that means that all of your favorite podcasts will now include chapters. You'll see them in the scrub bar and you can move your finger left or right to move between the different chapters, or you can tap the Q button down in the bottom right hand corner and then tap on the downward pointing arrow for the episode name. You can see all of the chapters and simply tap on one to go straight to it. You'll also now see some pretty clever integration between podcasts and other Apple related things. Basically, if somebody talks about music that's on Apple Music or a news article that exists in Apple News or another podcast from the podcasts app or a show that's on Apple TV, a little widget will appear on the screen when it's mentioned, allowing you to quickly tap to go straight to that thing. You'll also be able to scroll down in the episode page to a new section called From This Episode, which is going to show you exactly the same kind of stuff in a list format. So if you want to come back to something later, this would be a good way to do it. If you've ever downloaded music to the music app to listen to while you're offline, maybe on a flight or something like that, you might realize that lyrics don't show. That's because historically, the music app has only downloaded the music and not the associated lyrics, which seems like a really obvious miss on Apple's part. They have thankfully resolved it now in iOS 26.2. So from now on, if you download music to your iPhone, you'll also be able to access the lyrics even if you're offline. One of the most frustrating bugs in previous versions of iOS is the fact that if you've gone to a website and input login credentials for the first time and accidentally pressed no to the passwords prompt that appears, asking you if you want to save your login information, there's no easy way to undo that mistake. The only way that you've been able to do it in the past is to go into the passwords app and manually create a login and password for that specific website. And even that doesn't always work particularly well. Apple has resolved this now in iOS 26.2. So if you go into settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and choose apps, then scroll down and choose passwords, and then scroll to the bottom of this page, you'll see a new option in here called show excluded websites. Tap into it, unlock your device using face or touch ID, and you'll see all of the websites that you previously said no to storing login credentials for. If there is anything in this list that you would actually like to be able to store login credentials for, you would simply press the little red minus button to the left and then choose delete. And that will delete that website from this list. Now, the next time you go to that website, if you input your login credentials, you'll be prompted to save them. If you use Freeform, there is now a new feature in the app that allows you to add tables. And if you've added tables in the notes app before, it is a very similar setup here in Freeform. So on a Freeform canvas, you would press the little paperclip icon down at the bottom of the screen and then choose add table and a two by two table will be added to your canvas. You can use the plus buttons at the bottom left or top right of the table to add new columns and rows. You can then tap into a table to either begin typing into that particular cell or you can drag items from elsewhere on the canvas like images or shapes and drop them straight into the cells within the table. You can then tap on the table and use the dots at the corners and edges to resize it to get it looking the way that you like. If you pay attention to your sleep score, which is where your iPhone takes data from a compatible Apple Watch while you're asleep and aggregates it together to give you a score, Apple has made some changes here. If you're not already familiar with it, the sleep score essentially takes information from three areas, the duration that you slept, your bedtime, and the number of interruptions throughout the night and compiles a sleep score out of 100. Essentially, what Apple has done is change the bandings for the sleep score. So previously, very low was considered 0 to 29, low was considered 30 to 49, OK was 50 to 69, high was 70 to 89, and excellent was 90 to 100. Now the categories are 0 to 40 for very low, 40 to 60 for low, 61 to 80 for OK, 81 to 95 for high, and 96 to 100 for very high. It comes due to some feedback from users saying that the previous categories were a little bit too broad with Apple tightening up the bandings and making it essentially more difficult to get those extremely high scores. What about you? Do you use sleep scores? Leave me a comment and let me know. A welcome change to the Apple News app. When you tap on the Today button in News, you now get high-level categories up at the top for sport, entertainment, business, and food, saving you from having to go rooting around for them elsewhere in the app. Lastly, this isn't a feature that I've been able to test myself because it's only available in Japan for some reason, but I have seen it reported online. 
Users in Japan on iOS 26.2 can allegedly change what the side button does in terms of triggering a voice assistant, laying the groundwork for users to assign a different voice assistant to that button, like Gemini, Alexa, or theoretically even ChatGPT. It does beg the question of whether Apple is getting ready to roll out a much tighter integration with third-party voice assistants, maybe in iOS 26.4. So there you go, that's what's new in iOS 26.2. I wouldn't expect anything too much from iOS 26.3, which will most likely land early next year. I think iOS 26.4 is going to be the next big update, where, rumour has it, we might even get the long-awaited new version of Siri. What about you? Are you interested in the new version of Siri? Or have you lost interest? Drop me a comment and let me know. And don't forget, if you'd like a free iPhone tip in your email every day, sign up to the Daily Swipe via the link in the description or the QR code that you can see on screen. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.